Okay, guys, we'll get started. Uh, test is a week from the day. Yeah? Yeah. Four tests. Uh, we'll have the quiz, our last quiz next week. Um, group lab due next week when you come to lab. Any questions about that lab report? It's a formal lab report. One, one report per group. Directions should be there. Any questions about the directions? Any questions? All directions make sense? Uh, every, everything understood? Okay. Uh, next week in lab, we will just be checking out. No lab next week. Okay. Checking out of lab next week. We will, may also do some cleaning. Oh, yes. We may also have a lab lecture, it may be new material, or it might just be a review session. During or uh, like after we check out or something. Okay, let's get started. Uh, Vitic reaction, we left off here. Show a Vitic synthesis of the following alkenes. Basically, whenever you do a Vitic, uh, how do you do a Vitic reaction? It's a carbonyl compound, either an allohydro ketone, not acid derivative, I like ketone chemistry. And a Vitig reagent. Uh, we can break this part into which side do we want to be the carbonyl? One of these carbons becomes carbonyl, one of these carbons becomes dumb bond to a phosphorus. The trading, trading partners back. This is going to break, break this down into this carbonyl plus. This Vitig reagent, these two would give this. You'd rather your less substituted carbon of your alkene to come from the Vitig reagent. Of course, this is a one resonance structure. The other resonance structure is where you move electrons here. Okay. Why that way? Why not towards the phosphorus? When you move towards the phosphorus, what would that look like? Well, first off, this is the way you do it. You get P, PH3, and so we have, we move the electrons here, and that becomes minus. Phosphorus is actually positive now if you look at that. And there's your illid, it really looks like the illid, the two charges. But it's both the same, the same thing, right? The two structures in between. If we move the electrons this way, we would have a phenyl. I mean a phosphorus with three phenols. Put the electrons this way. What would this carbon be if we move them this way? Positive, what would be here? A lone pair, and that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. It'd be a negative. Two, four, six, okay? It's kind of interesting. Why is it better to move them, move them this way? I don't know that I have a good argument. I mean, we have an expanding octet. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. No, I'm sorry. It's more than 10. We have... No, that's 2, two 3, 4, 5, 6. That's a minus. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 in terms of electron count. I'm not sure why it polarizes that way. I don't really... It seems like phosphorus is more electronegative than carbon. Never really thought about this. But the way it's traditionally shown polarized is this way. You get carbanion and then this reacts and the oxygen back bonds form a ring and it collapses to the alkene. Okay, these two would be it. How about this guy over here? By the way, how do we do on that one? Get this to starting materials to do that by Vitig reaction. This one over here, somebody have something? Uh-huh. <coughs> uh 
Uh -huh. That's the simplest Wittig re reagent you can have. Take this back to cyclohexanone plus the uh, carbon uh, double bonded to the PPH3. What's on the carbon? <laughs> Two H's. And I do that with the carbon. You can also draw it. Uh, like that. I mean, if, you, uh, if this is line bond, it's a carbon with two H's there, right? That's the simplest vinegar agent you can have. And when they trade partners, the alkene becomes bonded here, and that's it. Why is it better to have the vinegar on the less substituted carbon? Because if it went the other way, we would have said, hey, we want to have Wittig like this, plus this carbonyl, which is actually an aldehyde. This theoretically could work, but you'd rather have your Wittig bonded to your less substituted carbon. One substituent on that carbon, two on this one. Because ultimately, how do you make the Wittig? Ultimately, it comes from something like this, reacting with triphenylphosphine, and then you extract proton. But here you're doing the SN2, and you'd rather have this carbon be less substituted. That's, that's the carbon that ends up here. Way back over here, less substituted is better, because when you're doing your SN2. To make this vinegar agent, you have to start with something like this, a secondary halide with triphenylphosphine followed by base to deprotonate and you want to show that resin structure. Hopefully everybody's with me here. Um, I fear that the, the two different resin structures show, uh, lead to confusion, especially if you've never looked at them and question what's, what's going on here. Okay, B. These two will react to give B. We don't have any fear of the double bond being somewhere else. <coughs> if we try to make B below, and this is B, correct? If we try to make it below, what chemistry ever used before to make alkenes? Maybe dehydration of an alcohol? Acid, E1 dehydration. If you dehydrate this alcohol, is B going to be the major product? Actually, no. The other one would be the major product. It's like Hoffman and Saitsev. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs have a guy called Zaitsev. But they pronounce it uh, Zaitsev. Uh, so I don't know if that's the way you pronounce it or not. But Back in Jersey says Zaitsev. So I'm like, yeah, all right. It's a, it's a wannabe. Russian chemist. <laughs> uh, Russian hockey player. <coughs> the one on the right is favored because it's more substituted alkene. So when you eliminate, uh, most of our eliminations in the past have had uh, the potential for uh, constitutional isomers, or we call regio isomers. You do Vitic, you don't have that. When you do Vitic, the double bond's going to be where you expect it to be. It's one of the powers of the Vitic. So this would actually be low yield for giving that here by this. Uh, by the way, we did the Vitic up there using cyclohexanone. This could be a, a conventional pathway to this, although it would be the minor product. But how do we get that actual carbon here in this pathway? Grignard. Methyl, bring in the methyl electrons up and protonate. That gives you your carbon. Then you have to dehydrate to turn that into the double bond. So that's some traditional chemistry that you certainly should, should know. The final exam is in a couple of weeks. Yeah, you remember that, that chemistry, yeah? yeah. <coughs> But Wittig is a, actually a much better way to make alkenes, not only because the double bond is where you expect it to be, 
But also, again, remember we said we can bring, to, bring together two large fragments of each of our phytic reactants, and we can make a larger alkene. Where here, when you, when you make the alkene, you're really not bringing together carbons, you're just actually eliminating something off. So you're not making a, a big alkene like you can with the Wittig reaction. <clears throat> Okay, questions about Vidic. Otherwise, back to the blue sheets, plays and condensation. Plays and condensation. Mixed plays and I think we left off with. Mixed. Please. Can we do this one in class on Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Okay. One's below. Uh, base. Is base is going to abstract what proton? The most acidic. Most acidic one in the flask. Which is the most acidic one, one in the flask? Right there. This one right here. Yes. Boom. What's it going to attack? It could attack another one of itself, but then what would you be doing with this guy? I'd recommend using it. Uh, add here, electrons up. Okay, you can show that back down, kick that off. Basically, we're replacing the leading group with the nucleophile. Uh, that's it. And then the nucleophile is what? It's this. We made that bond. Now, this H here is particularly acidic. So the base will take it off. How do we put it back on? H plus work cup is how you get it back on. This is the carbonyl that was attacked and the leading group got kicked off. This huge thing over here was the nucleophile that kicked off. We're just doing acid derivative chemistry here. Using an enolate, but we use this guy <laughs> in here because that's the most acidic because this is one of those compounds that the methylene between the two carbonyls. Question. Over here? It's not strong enough to be protein. Over here? Yes. Um, well, this is more acidic. I know it's going to take that one. But once this is off, then this is oh, not, yeah, this becomes sure. much less acidic than normally because the carbonyl is not going to support two anions as well. Um, now, you could see some, some fancy, if you saw some chemistry over here in some unique case, then you say, well, apparently it also deprotonated over here. It's not like we can't say it never would happen. This is just a favorite chemistry because it's more acidic. Um, and this, where if that wasn't there, this would be about 20. With this here, this is probably more like 25 to 30. Um, Okay, down here, this is an intramolecular plasin. This is called a Dieckmann reaction, or Dieckmann condensation. These are all called uh, plasin condensation because what do we make up here? If you take this, this is our product plus what? What else was made in this reaction? We made some ethanol. That was this guy kicked off. It picked up a proton, and this. So this, if you did it at a certain temperature, this could distill out. And when you distill something out, that's called a condensation. It doesn't have to be water to condense out, but usually some small, it's called a plasing condensation or a Dieckmann condensation here. Where are we going to make anion? Right here. Or there. It's going to get the same product. What's this going to attack? Uh, boom. Electrons up, back down, kick that off. We know the mechanism. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can you show products? Yes. It's beautiful. Um, should have a carbonyl. I'm gonna. Okay. So drawing it. I'm gonna have to look over here to draw it. I could probably do it, but I got. Uh, or we can just do it like this and then turn it into a ring. Boom, 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 boom. 
Electrons up, back down. We reform carbonyl. But what's now bonded here? This carbon is now bonded here, right? That carbon, carbon ion, okay. So there's your ring. What size ring is that? There's your product. It's just an ugly ring. It ain't really a ring. What is this? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's, that's just a bond. A six-membered ring. Okay? We can clean this up and make it a nice six-membered ring. The carbonyl. Um, one, two, three, four, five carbons. One, two, three, four, five carbons. Yep. So look, that's your ring. Coming off of this carbon is uh, a methyl ester. One, two, three, four, five, six. From the carbonyl, the six carbon has that coming off. From the carbonyl, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Coming off. Uh, there's your product. I don't know if you have difficulty seeing this or not, but if you look at this, what bond did we make? We just made that bond. We could go back and break this open like this and say, there's your carbonyl. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. <coughs> Oh, methyl. This bond here. What used to be on this carbonyl? This carbanion kicked it off. What used to be on this carbonyl? An oh, methyl. Oh, it's right there. Carbonyl is both have O methyl. There it is now. Just somehow figure out how you see this ring being formed. It might be best, if I can go back and probably do it this way, go ahead and turn this around and redraw this like this. Where it can bond. And then you say, hey, these electrons bond here, up, down, kick that off. And when this becomes bonded here instead of that, then you get that. Probably best to draw it where it's ready to make the ring. Because this big guy may be confusing to you too. Okay, that's an intramolecular plase and also called a Diekman condensation. Because we made this plus what? Plus methanol that got kicked off. Got to pick up a proton. Why did we use this base? Because that's the base thing. So it matches that. So it doesn't exchange this off and you get random esters. Another intramolecular. <laughs> so we're doing enolate chemistry, but just attacking carbonyls. Right? Okay. Somebody have a product for this one? Yeah. Two, CH2, this 
bind to carbon, that's carbonyl. What else is on here? Right there. We just made that bond right there. You can break it apart, have the enolate attack the carbonyl, but the carbonyl used to have the O-ethyl. The enolate attacked it and kicked off the O-ethyl. Uh, let's not forget about our benzene ring. That's a five-membered ring here. Five is better than seven. Yes. Going to require H plus workup because at the end of the reaction, that H there is off, because particularly acidic. That's like pK of about 10 to 12. The base is going to take it. The base is not catalyst. You need a full equivalent of catalyst of base. And then you got to put this back on with H plus workup. Okay, we made it to conjugate Michael addition. One of the last major topics before the end of the material. Michael addition, also known as a conjugate addition. We're adding to alpha beta unsaturated carbonyls, which we've seen two synthesis of these types of compounds. Here's an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. This carbon's alpha beta, it's unsaturated. Alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. It happens to be a ketone. Okay, two types of reactivity. One type we've been doing for six weeks. First type, <coughs> one to addition. A nucleophile, come in here, add to carbonyl, electrons up. That would get this here, right? Uh -huh. Nucleophile added, electrons up. This is called a 1 2 addition that we have been doing. Because if the nucleophile adds to this carbon, where do the electrons end up? They end up here. You look at here. If I add it here, we're going to call that one, the starting point. Where do the electrons end up? Here, that's next door, two. So it's like a one, two addition. Once we say what a one, four is, one, two will maybe make more sense. It's also called a direct addition. We're adding directly to the carbonyl. <laughs> Again, we've been doing that for six weeks, right? Well, you can do that with this substrate. Nothing new. What can happen here? Well, again, is there a leaving group? It depends on if nucleophile can leave. Uh, but very often, if nothing can then leave, all, the, all we can do is protonate and we end up with such a product, right? Okay, new chemistry. What could we do different here? Well, we can do this. We could have the double bond add here, and electrons move here. To give this. Now here, the nucleophile is adding to which carbon? The alpha or the beta? Yes, thank you. It's adding to the beta carbon. Okay. Nucleophile, actually a nucleophile adding to an alkene. Now in organic one, alkenes only react with electrophiles. The first time we ever added a nucleophile to a high bond was when we did aromatic chemistry and we did NAS, nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Everybody, everybody uh, with me today? Mm -hmm. Good. We did nucleophilic aromatic substitution. We added to the pi bond, right? This may be here, but we had something like maybe this. Nucleophile adding. What do we have to have for this to take place? The tribal withdrawing group next door, right? Something like this. If you look at that, that's now an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl, but this could be other things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, we really didn't call this Michael. <laughs> Why did we have to have this group here? Why did we say we had to have it? Because we had to put anion and where? <coughs> On the oxygen. Remember if nucleophile came in here, we did this. Let's make this pipeline in here. We moved electrons here. Electrons here. We said it, it, it doesn't work. Now when I showed it, we said, guess what? It doesn't work. You have to have this here. Why do we have to have such a group there? So we can put anion on the electron. On an electronegative heteroatom. Okay? It's not going to happen unless you can put anion on an electronegative heteroatom. Well, guess what? A nucleophile is not going to add to an alkene unless you can put anion on an electronegative heteroatom. Well, we did. You see it? It's on an electronegative heteroatom. Because this, we can just do resonance. When you do resonance, you have is major, left or right? <coughs> Which one's major? Right. Major. Why is that major? Negative. Negative's on oxygen. So if you had, I'm, I'm showing this structure here. But is this really the best structure for the actual species? No, because that's the minor one. There's your major. That is, this anion looks more like this. Nucleophilic addition to the beta carbon gives you an anion with negative on heteroatom, just like we said had to occur. Okay? Now, if nucleophile adds here, let's call that one. Where does the anion, where does the charge end up? Where do the electrons end up? That's one, where they end up? Predominantly on the oxygen. And if that's one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. It's called a one-four addition. So the nucleophile added at one, the electrons largely ended up at the four. Where here, the, the nucleophile added at one, and the electrons largely ended up at two. One-two versus one-four addition. This is also called a micro, micro addition. <coughs> After a chemist, also called a conjugate addition, because the double bond is conjugated with the carbonyl, and that's why we're able to do it. This is Michael addition, uh, conjugate addition, alpha, beta, and saturated carbonyl compounds. Nucleophilic addition actually gives an enolate, the major resonance structure the charges on heter atom. That's why we're able to do it. You cannot add a nucleophile to just a regular alkene. Just like you can't add a nucleophile to just a regular uh, benzene ring alkene. Okay, let's do some examples of Michael addition. First off, we need to state, make some statements. Your 1-2 addition product is the kinetic product. That means it's, it's the product that's formed fastest. We know that. Thus, it's always formed first. Fastest means first. For example, if two runners, one ran faster, this one would hit the finish line first. <laughs> slower is not first. <laughs> but if you would, <laughs> on the other hand, your one four addition product is your thermodynamic product. What does that mean to you? It's the most stable. The most stable product. 
So the one that so what does that tell you about the one that's formed fastest? The most stable. Okay. <laughs> Thermodynamic product is favorite is your favorite product, but only if equilibrium can be established. Because guess what? The thermodynamic product is not formed first. Because the kinetic product is formed first. The thermodynamic product, so the more stable. It's only favored if you can get an equilibrium established where maybe the first thing reverses. <coughs> the first thing's only going to reverse if the nucleophile can leave. Let's look at some examples and see if more of these things come up. Different types of nucleophiles prefer to add different ways. What about alkyl aryl nucleophiles? These are mainly something like Grignard's. Or remember, we're going to recuperate. Okay? Grignards and organolithiums, things like this, give one two products. Cuprates give one four products. <coughs> products here methyl magnesium bromide or methyl lithium. Both of these are essentially methyl anions, right? These are going to add here, electrons up, right? Here we got, boom, we got another methyl now. I'll draw it as a line. <laughs> Why did it add to carbonyl? Because we know 1, 2 addition is fastest. 1, 2 addition is your kinetic product. Fastest means first. So it adds there first. Okay, once it does that, can this reverse? Can this go backwards? Can this reform and kick off one of these? No, a plain carbon is not going to lead. cannot reverse. So the thing that was formed fastest is what you're stuck with. You get the kinetic product. Okay? All you can do is put on proton, and what do you get? You get that product there, which is actually a tertiary alcohol. There's your product. What type of reaction did we do? We added Grignard by a 1-2 addition. Okay, there you go. There's your 1-2 addition product after, after workup. You cannot reverse. One four product is only going to be favored if equilibrium can be achieved. Equilibrium means that it can reverse back and forth. Now, while we're here, we need to talk about <coughs> cuprates. Cuprates. Now, cuprates are going to be just kind of like magic, and it's going to be like, well, I thought we said this. I thought we said that. Cuprates. Remember these guys? This is, again, essentially methyl anion. What did we use cuprates for? For remember, we added to like acid chlorides, yeah, and we could do something like this to give what? It stops at ketone. If you used a Grignard, it would add again. Cuprate is a great way to make ketone from acid chloride. It's a less reactive alkyl nucleophile. Stops there. Okay? But it's still this. We're still doing aryl or alkyl nucleophiles. Here, here, here's the statement. Cuprates prefer to add 1,4. <coughs> Why? 
magic of copper. That's <laughs> magic of copper. Something about the copper, there's some unique mechanism beyond what we can really talk about here. Something with the coat, the copper makes the 1,4 product the kinetic product. But it's both the kinetic product and the thermodynamic product. With cuprates, you just get 1,4. We're not going to try to give mechanism. Um, so, knowing that cuprates add 1,4 show the product of this reaction. show major product. Uh, the major product is the 1,4 product. Show the 1,4 show the product. I mean, I could draw a melt there, or, even, or we just keep it as a line and not put the melt there. Melt there, right? Melt <laughs> there, what's, what's here? And I am? Okay. I can show a resonance structure of that. H plus workup is going to put proton on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, you don't want to show the resonance structure. You don't want to show it with like the double bond form there, and then, like that. Okay. Well, I mean, you can if you want. I was only saying because, like, above when we were doing it, you said that it was the major product when you have the anion on the major resonance structure. Okay. Same problem. Uh, this is also a resonance structure. Uh, this always has a resonance structure. It's double bond here, charge on there. It's called the enolate. I mean, both of them are called enolate. This, yeah. But for this, you don't pick up proton. And with H plus workup, and what do you get? And there you go. It now has two H's here instead of just one. Right? Now, perhaps we need to revisit this. We can show resonance structure before we do that. I mean, resonance structure is there. That's why we were able to make this, because it's resonance stabilized. We're able to put charge here. Okay? Here, here. This, this is one thing here. It's one thing. Protonated. I mean, I could protonate it here, but if I protonated it there, what is this? It's an enol. I mean, is this the structure? What are enols going to do? Oh, it's going to go there. I mean, this is a different mechanism, but. Yes, it's there, but we're not going to protonate that resonance structure. All that's in equilibrium, but the equilibrium favors the key point. Here's your final problem. Right? So, cuprates did a 1,4 addition. So we added here, the nucleophiles here, added to the beta group. Magic of copper, cuprates do Michael addition. Uh, I'm sure somebody discovered that first and said, hmm, water grain yards add one two, but cuprates add one four. Uh, I don't know if it's in the handout here, but an interesting study was done at one time. When you make, how do you make grain yards? How do you make methyl magnesium bromide? Methyl bromide, treat it with what? Magnesium metal? Magnesium metal, it will oxidatively insert. 
Um, I wish we did a Grignard reaction in the lab. That'd be um, it's a little bit difficult. You have to have dry solvent. Uh, sometimes it's hard to get that that reaction right up there to, to start because the metal doesn't dissolve and it's a surface reaction. If you ever do it, eventually the metal will actually just kind of dissolve. Remember when we had sodium to ethanol? The sodium, the bubbles came off, and the piece of sodium just got smaller and smaller yeah. and eventually disappeared. Yeah. That's the same thing here. The magnesium just, just gets smaller and eventually it disappears. The metal is gone. Because now, this guy is, tends to be soluble in, in the, like ether or something. But the original metal is not. Um, what do we get here? One, one, uh, one, two. Grignards do one, two. Actually, if you do a Grignard, uh, you may get a little one, four product. Um, don't need to write this down. I'm just sort of use uh, off the shelf magnesium. You may get like ninety five percent and five percent. This being one two, this being one four. But if you use super pure <coughs> magnesium, which is like highly purified, the more expensive stuff, that's you know, you get more like a hundred zero. Why do you think you get like 5% of the, the Michael product when you use off-the-shelf magnesium? Come on now, you can tell me this. It's in copper? It's the best. No way. Because off-the-shelf magnesium has a little bit of copper in it. Okay? And it's been shown that if you use super pure magnesium, you get less and less of that other product. Most metals have trace amounts of other metals in them, I mean, unless you get to some super pure, right? Okay. That type of study's been done. And if you use real crude magnesium, you may get more and more of the other, because it depends on how much copper's in your magnesium. All right? So next time you go to the stock room and ask for magnesium, think about it. I want the good stuff. How important it is for me to spend a thousand dollars on magnesium versus ten dollars? Okay, what's next? Here we go. Show the product of those two reactions on your own. Pretty straightforward. Heteroatomucleophiles. Oxygens, nitrogens, these type of things. These per tend to give one four addition. One four addition tends to be because look, here we go, methylamine. Where is it going to add first? Carbonyl or beta? Where does it add first? Beta. No, they don't add their first. We, we said the one two in direct fission is your kinetic product. That means it's fastest as it first. It adds here first. It runs up. I'm just going to call this R. Electrons up. We can get something like this, right? Yeah. Is this reversible? Can this get kicked back off? Yes, it can get kicked back off. So it gets kicked back off, and it's like, well, now I'm going to do the other one, the slower one. So you have to show that it gets kicked off? No, we don't know that. How did we do it before? We would have said there would be like a proton transfer, and after that happened, it seems like it would be stable. <laughs> No, it's stable, yes, but reversible is still reversible. Yes, you can make ending here. I could have kept going and made ending here. Carbonyl and amine get ending. The ending is reversible. And when it's reversible, we were looking at establishing equilibrium. And if you can establish an equilibrium, which product's favorite? One four. That's what's written on the previous page. 
the nuclear file is reversible, and you typically are going to end up here. So let's just go ahead and do it. This, this refers to one four as here, like here. Let's look at it. Do we need a proton? Do we need a pro, uh, protic workup? Yes. yes. No. <laughs> we don't need a protic workup. There's the amine. What do we have here? Anion. Do I need to add in a proton source? H plus. No, we have one built in. <laughs> The mean was neutral. It's got to lose a proton. What's this going to do? This needs a proton. That needs to get rid of one. H plus transfer. You don't need to throw in any acid. It's going to protonate itself. H plus transfer gives them product. What type of product do we have here? Some 1 4 addition product. It's a Michael reaction product. A means prefer this type of product. It's all in equilibrium. This is favored at equilibrium. One four product. It's your thermodynamic product. Down here, same thing. We got plus and minus. These electrons are going to add here. These electrons here. This is going to pick up a proton. Where can it get a proton from? Ethanol. It can actually get it from ethanol. Uh, yes, it can. It takes proton. Can that get a proton from ethanol? If it takes proton from ethanol, we make what? Yes. Is that favored or is it gonna or is this gonna take the proton back? How do we judge that? Because it'll just reform the base. Ethanol is 16. Plus the anion of this. That's the acid on this side. Over here, this is the acid, and it's what? 20. Which side's favorite? 16 or 20? 20. Yes. See, this is favored. See, it's going to hold the proton. Yeah, it will not, fa it's not going backwards. This is favored. For it to have the proton, it's favored. Ethanol will supply the proton. So those are examples of heteroatoms adding one four addition. <clears throat> How can we use this in synthesis? Give a synthesis of the following compounds from cyclohexanone. That's cyclohexanone with no phenyl. How can we put a phenyl on here? Think about it. Think about these. Show these for Monday. Synthesis. I'm doing on spectroscopy. There will be a comprehensive spectrum on test four. Okay, guys. Lots of applications of Michael additions. Look below. We'll also look at polymerization, including like super glue and the white, the white handout. Super glue is a is a Michael addition. Gone, gone polymeric, gone rogue. <laughs> we'll, we'll look at that. Please look at the handout. Super glue. <laughs>